When I met Mr. Shof, I had been working six years. I started when I was 19, and when I met him, I was 25. He said to me, Mr. Rohn, you have been working now for six years. How are you doing? I said, not very well. He said, then I suggest you not do that anymore. Six years is long enough to operate the wrong plan. Next he asked, how much money have you saved in the last six years? I said, not any. He said, who sold you on that plan six years ago? What a fantastic question. Where did I get my present plan that wasn't working well? Hey, everyone has bought someone's plan. The question is, whose? Whose plan have you bought? Now, those initial confrontations as you come to grips with your own past experiences may be a little painful at first, especially if you have made as many errors as I did. But think of the progress you can make when you have finally confronted those errors by becoming a better student of your own life. Now, the next way to learn is from other people's experiences. And remember, you can learn from other people whether they have done it right or wrong. You can learn from negative as well as positive. The Bible is such a great book because it is a collection of human stories on both sides of the ledger. One list of human stories is called examples, do what these people did. And the other list of human stories is called warnings, don't do what these clods did. What a wealth of information, what to do and what not to do. I think it also means, however, that if your story ever gets in somebody's book, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. There are three ways to learn from other people. The first is to listen to the cassettes and read the books by and about people who've accomplished great things. All the successful people I know and work with around the world are good readers. They just read, read, read. They are so curious that they are driven to read because they just have to know. It is one of the things they all have in common. Here's a good phrase. All leaders are readers. And they use cassette programs too, especially while they're in the car or during other times when they can't read. Cassettes can help all of us easily pick up new ideas and new skills. Did you know there are cassettes and books on how to be stronger, more decisive, a better speaker, a more effective leader, have a better effect on other people, become more loving, develop personality, get rich, develop influence, become sophisticated, and people don't use them? How would you explain that? Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and told how they did it on cassettes like this and people don't want to listen? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. He says, well, yeah, if you worked where I work, by the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to have a bite to eat, watch a little TV, and get to bed. You can't stay up half the night and read, read, read. And this is the guy that's behind on his bills. He's a good worker, hard worker, sincere. But remember, you can be sincere and work hard all your life and wind up broke, confused, and embarrassed. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good reader, a good listener. At least he could hear a good cassette on the way home, right? Now, you don't have to read or listen to educational cassettes half the night. Although if you're broke, it's a good place to start. But here is all I ask, just 30 minutes a day. That's all. Stretch it to an hour if you can, but at least 30 minutes. Half rich isn't bad. 30 minutes. Hear or read something challenging, something instructional, at least 30 minutes a day. And here's the next key. Every day, don't miss. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes. Hey, you can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some ideas, examples, and inspiration. There's a Bible phrase that says, humans cannot live on bread alone or food alone. It says the next most important thing to bread is words. Words nourish the mind. Words nourish the soul. Humans have to have food and words to be healthy and prosperous. Make sure you have a good diet of words every day. I told my staff one day, some people read so little they have rickets of the mind. And also remember to properly feed the mind, you must have good balance. Don't just read or listen to the easy stuff. 
you can't live on mental candy. Here is a thought. Why not call good books and cassettes tapping the treasure of ideas? That's it. Tapping the treasure of ideas, like you're doing with this program. And if somebody's got a good excuse for not tapping the treasure of ideas for at least 30 minutes every day, or spending the money and getting the books and cassettes, I'd like to hear it. Some excuses you wouldn't believe. I say, John, I've got this gold mine. I've got so much gold, I don't know what to do with it all. Come on over and dig. John says, I don't have a shovel. I say, well, John, get you one. He says, do you know what they want for shovels? Hey, invest the money. Get the cassettes and books. The best money you can spend is money invested in your self-education. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to investing in your own better future. Mr. Shof got me started on my library when I first met him. He said to me, become self-educated. Standard education will get you standard results. Check those numbers and see if that's what you want. And if it isn't, if you want something better than standard, you must become self-educated. So I went to work on my library, and I now have one of the best. Shelf recommended a couple of books in particular to get me started. Now, I had a Bible, that's 66 books, so that was a pretty good start, and my parents saw to it that I had a good study of the Bible. But the first book Mr. Shelf told me to get was the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. If you don't already have it, it's a great one to add to your library. Earl Nightingale has put it on cassette. The title should intrigue you, Think and Grow Rich. I read it several dozen times. Shelf said repetition is the mother of skill. And if you could have seen my bank account at the time, you would have known I needed lots of that kind of repetition. Some of the ideas in that book made major changes in my life. As I look back now, the book was worth thousands, and I bought it for pennies. I learned a very valuable lesson. There can be a great deal of difference between cost and value. Before I met Mr. Shof, I used to ask, how much does it cost? After I met him, however, I soon learned to ask, how much is it worth? I started basing my life on worth instead of cost, and everything changed. So that was one book he recommended, Think and Grow Rich. The next book he recommended I get was a book on nutrition. Shelf said, study nutrition. Vitality plays an important part in doing well. Some people don't do well because they don't feel well. It's not that they're not intelligent. It's that they're ill. They don't have the fire and the vitality to do well. So he really got on me about nutrition. Now, some of those health books are a bit weird, but you can separate out the weird stuff. There are cassettes on nutrition, too. Remember, don't be a follower. Be a student. Someone says, I read this book. Should I follow? And the answer is no. Read at least two books and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower. Be a student. So take care of yourself. There's a Bible phrase that says, many times the spirit is willing, but the body's weak. So you have to work on both. You wake up in the morning and the mind says, let's go get them. And the body says, I can't even get out of bed. So work on your health. A person's library of books and cassettes reveals his or her most dominant desires. It's interesting to walk into someone's house and browse through the library. What does your library say about you? So read all the books. Now here's good news. You don't have to read them all at once. Try this, two books a week, in ten years is a thousand books. If you read a thousand books in the next ten years, do you think they would greatly influence all the dimensions of your life? The answer is, of course. Well, here's what's exciting. It's only two books a week. However, I would suggest if you haven't read two books a week for the last ten years, you are about a thousand books behind. Can you imagine the incredible disadvantage it will be 10 years from now to stride into the marketplace a thousand books behind? For some confrontations, you won't be a match. And for some opportunities, your knowledge will be too lacking. 
for some values, your philosophy will be too shallow. Missing skills, missing knowledge, missing insights, missing values, missing lifestyle. It could happen if you don't read the books. Remember, the book you don't read won't help. You can't read too many books, but you can read too few. Now, the next way to learn from others is to listen. Become a great listener. Get around successful people and listen. Listen to what they say and listen to how they say it. There is something to be said for style as well as content. And never has listening to successful people been easier or less costly than it is today. With cassettes like the one you're listening to now, you can own cassette programs by and about the most successful people in any field. And you can listen to their ideas while you do something else. While driving your car, exercising, getting dressed in the morning, anytime. Listen over and over again until their ideas become your ideas, their inspiration, your inspiration. A lot of the books you're anxious to read, such as Think and Grow Rich, have been condensed and narrated on cassette. Your cassette library of great authors and ideas can be the investment with the greatest return of all. Great cassettes will do more than teach you great ideas. They'll also remind you of the important things you already know but sometimes forget. They'll lift your spirit. They'll keep your mind on what's important, on your goal and how you can achieve it. And what a modest investment for the seeds of fortune. Ideas well-written, well-spoken, well-received, well-learned, and well-invested can be your driving life force for wealth and happiness. Here's another way to succeed by listening. Choose a really successful person and take him or her out to dinner and listen. Ask questions and listen. If a man is poor, he can really help himself by taking a rich person out to dinner and listening. Spend 50, 60, 80, or $100. Go for the full nine courses. Start with the hors d'oeuvres. Ask questions. The salad takes 15 minutes. Keep the conversation going. The biggest steak in town takes 45 minutes. Keep it rolling. Ask more questions. Pour on the dessert. Stretch the meal about two hours. See, if you get someone successful to eat and talk for two hours, he or she may drop ideas in your lap that could change your life. Multiply your income by two, by three, by five. But you're right. Poor people don't usually take rich people out to dinner. That's the problem. The man says if he's rich, let him buy his own dinner. I'm not coming up with any money. And besides, if you worked where I work, by the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to have a bite to eat, watch a little TV, and get to bed. You can't spend all that time trying to find a rich man to feed. And this man's behind on his installment payments. Behind. He's a good worker, hard worker, sincere. But remember, you can work hard and be sincere all your life and wind up broken unhappy. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good listener.